Mr. Popper's Penguins, Chapter 12, More Mouths to Feed. So the next day, Mr. Popper called an engineer and had a large freezing plant installed in the cellar and took Captain Hook and Greta down there to live. Then he had the furnace taken out and moved upstairs into the living room. It looked very odd there, but as Mrs. Popper said, it was a relief, at least not to have to wear their overcoats all the time. Mr. Popper was quite worried when he found that all these changes were going to be very expensive. The refrigerating engineer was worried too. When he found out that Mr. Popper had practically no money, However, Mr. Popper promised to pay as soon as he could, and the man let him have everything on credit. It was a good thing that Mr. Popper got the penguins moved when he did, because Mrs. Popper had been right about the eggs. The rookery had scarcely been moved to the basement when Greta laid the first egg. Three days later, the second one appeared. Since Mr. Popper knew that penguins lay only two eggs a season, he was astonished when, a little later, the third egg was found under Greta. Whether the change in climate had changed the penguins' breeding habits, Mr. Popper never knew. But every third day, a new one would appear, until there were ten in all. Now, penguin eggs are so large that the mother can sit on only two at a time, and this created quite a problem. Mr. Popper solved it, however, by distributing the extra eggs under hot water, bottles, and electric heating pads, kept just at penguin body heat. The penguin chicks, were, when they began to hatch, were not so handsomely marked as their mother and father. They were fuzzy, drool little creatures who grew at a tremendous rate. Captain Cook and Greta were kept very busy bringing food to them, though of course the poppers all helped too. Mr. Popper, who had always been such a great reader, had no difficulty in thinking of names for the penguin children. They were Nelson, Columbus, Louisa, Jenny, Scott, Magdalene, Adrielina, Isabella, Ferdinand, and Victoria. Still, he was rather relieved that there were no more than ten to name. Mrs. Popper, too, thought that this was about enough penguins for anybody, though they really did not make much difference to her in her housework, as long as Mr. Popper and the children remembered to close the cellar door in the kitchen. The penguins all loved to climb the stairs that led up to the kitchen, and never knew when to stop unless they found the kitchen door closed. Then, of course, they would turn around and toboggan down the steps again. This made rather a curious noise sometimes when Mrs. Popper was working in the kitchen, but she got used to it, as she had got used to so many other strange things this winter. The freezing plant that Mr. Popper had got for the penguins downstairs was a large and good one. It made very large blocks of ice instead of small ice cubes. So that soon Mr. Popper had made a sort of ice castle down there for the 12 penguins to live in and climb over. Mr. Popper also dug a large hole in the cellar floor and made a swimming and diving pool for the birds. From time to time he would throw live fish into the pool for the penguins to dive for. They found this very refreshing because to tell the truth they had gotten a little tired of canned shrimps. The live fish were specially ordered and were brought all the way from the coast in tank cars and glass boxes to 432 Proudfoot Avenue. Unfortunately, they were quite expensive. It was nice that there were so many penguins because when two of them, usually Nelson and Columbus, got into a fight and began to spar at each other with their flippers, the ten other penguins would all crowd around to watch the fight and make encouraging remarks. This made a very interesting little scene. Mr. Popper also flooded part of the cellar floor for an ice rink, and here the penguins often drilled like a sort of small army in fantastic marching movements and parades around the ice. The penguin Louisa seemed especially fond of leading these marching drills. It was quite a sight to see them. After Mr. Popper had the idea of training Louisa to hold a small American flag in her beak while she proudly led the solemn parades. Janie and Bill would often bring their little friends home from school with them, and they would all go down and watch the penguins for hours. At night, instead of sitting and reading and smoking his pipe in the living room, as he had done before, Mr. Popper 
would put on his overcoat and take his things downstairs. Then he would sit and read with his mittens on, looking up from time to time to see what his pets were doing. He often thought about the cold, distant regions in which the little creatures really belonged. Often, too, he thought how different his life had been before the penguins had come to keep him occupied. It was January now, and already he dreaded to think of the time when spring would come, and he would have to leave them all day to go back to painting houses. That is the end of Mr. Popper's Penguins, Chapter 12. If you like my channel, you can like and subscribe below. And remember, Mr. Baker loves you.